Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there. Good morning. It is Monday, January 8th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the beautiful weather over the weekend. Did you? I uh, did. Yeah, it was absolutely gorgeous. Cloudy and kind of gray and rainy out there right now. The only thing we're missing is the wind and the rain. It's but, just a matter of yeah, time. Yeah, that'll right? come later and uh, we'll check in with Justin and yeah, yeah. today, right? It's going to be a, a wild day across the state of Texas. I'll say that we've got a lot going on and yes, we're going to get some very windy conditions as we head towards the afternoon and evening hours. Let me first start though with a big picture and you can see this upper level low. So in the Texas Panhandle, we got snow flying right now, starting to see some storms take shape along our frontal boundary and where we are we're just seeing some damp weather with some showers at the moment we could see a few thunderstorms over the next few hours before those winds kick in behind the front let me show you all the advisories we have going on and there's a lot wind advisories for the entire state of texas winds will be gusting everywhere but Locally, we're expecting gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour by the time we get into this evening. High wind warnings out west, blizzard warnings in the Texas Panhandle. You got red flag warnings just to the west of San Antonio where there will be a high fire danger today. And as we look at the radar right now, yes, it's all fairly light, although we're starting to see perhaps more moderate rain develop on the north side of San Antonio, just to the north and west of 1604 near Holotus. Uh, no lightning strikes detected yet, but we could see a few rumbles of thunder Again, next couple of hours. That's something we'll be watching for. 67, 10 o'clock, 68, 11 o'clock, 70 by noontime. That's probably our high temperature because that front comes through and then temperatures fall off into the 60s. And then we start to see those very strong winds overnight. Again, we could see some gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour. We're going to talk much more about this coming up, but we know the roads are wet. It's been not a great morning commute, RJ. No, certainly not, Justin. Seen a lot of different things kind of pop up around the city, but good news is TxDOT has been taking care of a lot of these things in a timely fashion. We do have a couple of things to let you know about. First of all, let's take a look here at our TransGuide traffic cameras, I-10 in Dezavala. There was a crash there that was reported earlier. That has been cleared out. 37 Hackberry, we see traffic moving along pretty smooth in both directions there. We do have a crash reported a little bit southwest of downtown. So this is 90 eastbound at Frio City Road, not causing any major delays at the moment, but this just popped up on our maps right now. So uh, likely to cause a little bit of a traffic back up here in a couple of minutes. Again, if you're coming into uh, 35, maybe going into the downtown area, you see 90 eastbound at Frio City Road. Just keep that one in mind. Taking you out to the northeast side, and we have a stalled vehicle being reported at uh, southbound at Judson Road. And uh, again, just a stalled vehicle, but you can see it is causing a pretty good backup there going past Live Oak and past the Forum. So again, a stalled vehicle being reported there southbound at Judson Road. The rest of the city things looking pretty good so far right now and again we've seen some wet roads out there a lot of different accidents kind of pop in and out especially up 281 where we do see some dangerous curves there but uh, things looking pretty good right now on 281 right now we'll continue to monitor the very latest on the roads give you any more updates if they become available to us mark and stephanie back to you guys thank you rj here's today's nine at nine Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas will be in Eagle Pass today to get a first-hand look at border enforcement efforts. He's also going to meet with Border Patrol Commissioner Troy Miller and local leaders. Residents in Eagle Pass hope Mayorkas' visit will bring change and relief to the migrant crisis. We have a crew in Eagle Pass and will bring you live coverage throughout the day. New questions being raised about Boeing after one of its 737 MAX 9 jets suffered a mid-air incident with a door plug on an Alaska Airlines flight blowing out. The FAA is grounding the jets until they can be inspected. That's forcing Alaska Airlines to cancel flights for days, including over 100 flights today. Congressional leaders announced they've worked out a budget agreement to keep the government funded through the end of the fiscal year. Despite the tentative agreement, two funding deadlines are coming up, January 19th and February 2nd. If Congress does not approve the budget deal, the government could still shut down. Former President Donald Trump will be spending some time in court this week. Sources say he plans to attend federal appeals court arguments on presidential immunity in Washington, D.C. tomorrow. That case centers on accusations that he was part of an insurrection on January 6, 2021. And he's also expected to attend closing arguments in his New York civil fraud trial Thursday, where he's accused of inflating property values to get loans for his real estate and golf resort businesses. Trump denies all wrongdoing. 
Growing concerns about the growth of so-called insurance deserts. Finding home or auto insurance is starting to become far more difficult with many insurance companies booking billions in losses and then either hiking rates or threatening to yank coverage from some states altogether. Some iPhone owners are receiving their share of a $500 million settlement dubbed Battery Gate. Some people are reporting payments of up to $92. It's for a 2017 lawsuit accusing Apple of deliberately cutting the performance of its older phones without informing people. Samsung is out with a new TV it says solves a common headache. The company is announcing its new OLED TV at the Consumer Electronics Show this week, saying the new screen is glare free. It comes with a special treatment on the screen that the company insists all but eliminates any noticeable reflections. The Houston Texans clinched the AFC South Division title yesterday for the first time since 2019. They secured its playoff trip with a 23-19 victory over the Colts and Jacksonville's loss to Tennessee. The Texans are now hosting the Browns in the AFC wildcard playoffs game Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys won the NFC East and the number two seed in the conference by beating the Commanders 38 to 10 yesterday. Dallas went 12 for five in a third consecutive year and will host the Green Bay Packers, a team current Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy once led to a Super Bowl championship on Sunday at 3.30 p.m. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Like we just mentioned at the top of the nine at nine, Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas is visiting Eagle Pass today. He's planning to meet with Border Patrol and local leaders about border enforcement. Daniela Ibarra is in Eagle Pass today to cover and visit. And Daniela, how do people there, uh, excuse me, how do people there in Eagle Pass feel about Mayorkas being in town? Well, they're glad that someone who has the president's ear is coming here to see the issues for themselves. Now, they say that, uh, you know, last week Republicans were here and they said that Eagle Pass is the epicenter of the migrant crisis. Now, the city has seen waves and waves of migrants come through in the past couple of months. Border Patrol has detained thousands of men and women and children. There were so many people crossing. Border Patrol had to close a bridge to focus on processing the migrants. That bridge is a lifeline for Eagle Pass businesses. That closure stunted profits for many of them, some reporting up to 40 or 60 percent of profit losses. Now, Mayorkas, he called Eagle Pass's mayor to let him know that that bridge was reopening last week. The mayor says he's glad someone is finally coming to listen. I'm grateful that he is coming. The invitation is open to everybody, where it be Democrats, Republicans, everyone is, is uh, welcome to come and help us out in this situation. Last month, Mayorkas was on the other side of the border visiting with Mexican authorities to talk about ways to reduce illegal border crossings here, and it's something that local leaders have taken notice of. Danielle, let's talk about timing. Uh, why is Mayorkas visiting now? That's the question a lot of people here are asking. The mayor, when we talked to him, like you heard right there, he said he's glad that Mayorkas is coming. He just wishes this visit would have happened two, three weeks ago when this field behind me was filled with thousands of migrants, some waiting overnight to be processed by Border Patrol. Well, Daniela, also last week, over 60 House representatives were there visiting. Many said they wanted to see the crisis for themselves. What did they say about Mayorkas' visit? Well, they didn't say anything specifically about the visit, but they did touch on Alejandro Mayorkas, specifically the, uh, the chairman of the House Committee on Homeland Security. He said that Secretary Mayorkas is, quote, the biggest threat to American safety, and he accused Mayorkas of not following policies and the law. And that's something we're hoping to ask Mayorkas about later this afternoon when he has media availability with us. All right, Daniela Ibarra live in Eagle Pass. She'll have continuing coverage for us throughout the day right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. Thank you, ma'am. Right now, 907, 65 degrees coming up next on GMSA at 9. The U.S. is taking the first steps to get people back on the moon in the future. After the break, David Sears will join us with a look at our morning headlines. In the morning headlines, a piece of the Alaska jetliner found in a backyard and a rocket launch with some famous ashes on board. And a surprise winner at the Golden Globes, at least for some. David Sears is here with your morning headlines. Good morning. If you're a Swifty, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do all that well at the Golden Globes. It was a movie about a concert. Right. So it wasn't real deep anyway. So, you know, but we'll have that for you in just a second. But first, let's start with this. How would you like to walk out of your house? You're going into your backyard and lo and behold, there's just some weird looking object just sitting there. 
Turns out a school teacher in Portland, Oregon, found a vital piece of Alaska Airlines Flight 1282, 737 MAX 9. It was in his yard. That piece that Bob, the school teacher, found was the 63-pound emergency door plug. The NTSB has it now. Alaska Airlines configures their MAX 9 so they don't need all those exit doors. They covered that space with a plug. That plug blew off Friday. It depressurized just after takeoff, and it left a huge hole in the fuselage. The pilots made an emergency landing. Not only was a plug recovered, but two cell phones were also found. One was in a yard and the other was on the side of the road. Found a phone sitting on the side of the road that uh, had apparently fallen 16,000 feet. So I opened it up and it was in airplane mode with a travel confirmation and baggage claim for Alaska 1282. It was described as chaos and it was very violent uh, when the uh, Rapid D compression in the door uh, was expelled uh, out of the plane. Amazing that phone was all in one piece. Apparently there were three other previous pressurized warnings on Alaska Airlines flights. The airline decided not to use those planes for long haul flights over water, but now 171 of the aircraft grounded by the FAA so they could be inspected. But the chair of the NTSB also has another disturbing resolution. She found that three infants were behind, were being held in laps of passengers and not in baby seats. The blowout was so strong it ripped headrests off seats. So she is calling for changing, for changes, saying that every baby needs to be in an approved baby seat in their own airline seats. Hey, if you were asleep overnight, you missed this blast off. That is a Vulcan rocket carrying a small lunar lander and ashes of famous people. This is the first time the lunar launch since the final Apollo mission. The company United Launch Alliance is trying to break into the commercial space tourism industry. They hope to land their lunar lander on the surface of the moon come February 23rd. The payload also has experiments and the remains of 70 people. Among those, Gene Roddenberry, he's the creator of Star Trek, and Star Trek actress Nichelle Nichols. He and the first lady of Star Trek, along with a number of the other cast members from Star Trek, along with countless other prominent, wonderful people, their ashes and their DNA are going to join together and be launched out. Humanity is going where no one has gone before. There are five lunar landings scheduled for this year. Companies trying to lower costs and get tourism up there in the moon. Go spend a day on the moon in a lunar lander. Probably it. Pretty buck. Barbie was a box office hit, but she did not bring home much gold last night. Famous folks crammed into Beverly Hilton for the annual Golden Globes. All smiles because the writers and actor strike is over. Everybody back to work. Barbie nominated for seven awards, only had two. The big winner was Oppenheimer, five awards, including Best Drama Movie, Best Director, two awards for Best Actor and Supporting Actor for Killian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. and some history made last night. Lily Gladstone, the first indigenous actor to win Best Performance by a female actor in a motion picture drama. She played Molly in Killers of the Flower Moon. The Oscars are just a couple of weeks away. So I guess that's a prelude to what we expect from the Oscars. It could bit. be. Mm -hmm. It could be. Does that stuff, I, I don't pay that much attention anymore. Does that stuff turn out to be? So Oppenheimer should walk away with a bunch of Oscars. Sometimes it works that way. It'll do pretty well. Yeah. Wasn't that like a three hour movie? Uh, three, three and a half, something like that. Did it have an intermission? Uh, mm -hmm. no. Not unless you're streaming. They don't do intermissions anymore. <laughs> They're like, no. let's all go out to the lobby and get no. some. No, I like the old school one <laughs> with the dancing popcorn. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. No, no intermission in a three hour movie? No. You have to make your own. That's right. <laughs> wow. Thank you, David. All right. Right now, 915, 65 degrees outside with live cam. And that kind of sets the stage. You even see what looks like maybe some showers on the far right side of the screen. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, we are seeing some of those uh, showers and storms starting to develop uh, again here on San Antonio. Nothing that's terribly heavy, but the roads have been wet this morning. It's yes, they have. some problems uh, for the morning commute. Let's start with the radar. I'll show you exactly where the rain is right now. Uh, and it doesn't look again all that uh, uh, all that bad, but we do have some pockets of more moderate rain trying to show up. And I think we could see a rumble of thunder in the next couple of hours. Nothing severe, I don't think, here around San Antonio. But the rain's going to stick around. And even if you're not seeing some of these showers right now, there's drizzle out there. So everything's just damp, at least for the moment. This lasts until about lunchtime. And then everything changes because we get a front coming through and we 
dry out and the winds pick up and any moisture on those roads will quickly evaporate. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit closer here on the north side where we are seeing some of these uh, perhaps more moderate downpours around Holotus. Uh, anything you see is not going to last very long, but uh, noticing another little return here right around Garden Ridge. And again, this will be the scene for the next, I'd say, hour or two before things uh, begin to change. And here's why. Look at this big upper level low. This is a very dynamic system as we've been talking about. You've got the line of storms right along the front. There is the potential for some severe weather off to the east of San Antonio. Then on the back side, you've got near blizzard conditions in the Texas Panhandle. So a lot to look at here. The severe weather risk, as I said, is going to be well to our east. So I'd say Houston and Beaumont, New Orleans, Mobile, those are the areas that are going to see some really strong storms today. There's potential for some tornadoes there. It's just uh, all the dynamics of the system are a little too far east for us uh, to see any storms. Uh, but there are plenty of advisories out, wind advisories for basically the whole state. you got red flag warnings closer to us near Del Rio and Eagle Pass. High wind warnings out west. There's the blizzard warning. So a lot to look at with this storm system. And we should point out that with this red flag warning, any fire that develops today, West of San Antonio, if if that were to happen, it would spread very quickly. So we got to be so very careful uh, with these kinds of conditions. And that front should make it through here by about uh, noontime to one o'clock. As it does, takes any sort of rain with it to the east. And so by two o'clock, we're clearing out. But that's the point when the winds begin to pick up. And then that front will continue to push towards the Gulf Coast, uh, bringing dry air in across for all of our viewing area. And look at these potential wind gusts. We're going to fast forward to 10 o'clock tonight, 46, maybe gusting to 50 in New Braunfels, anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour. That's a possibility uh, with these winds out of the north and west. And that continues right on into midnight. The winds are going to be howling tonight. You'll hear them. Uh, if you're awake and then by tomorrow morning, eh, they're trying to subside a little bit, but we're still looking at gusts 35 to 40 miles per hour. You factor that in with some cold temperatures and we'll have a wind chill tomorrow morning. It's not until midday towards the afternoon tomorrow that the winds finally start to subside. Look at these wind chills tomorrow morning. You're going to want to make sure the kids have big coats with them. It'll feel like it's 32 in San Antonio. It'll feel like it's in the 20s in a lot of spots in the hill country, those gusty winds with that colder air. Right now, we've just got clouds, a little bit of rain out there, but the forecast calls for 70 by noontime. That's when we reach our high temperature, and then the numbers fall off a little bit and it gets windy. 64 at 3 o'clock, down into the 50s by 5 o'clock, and dipping down into the 50s and eventually 40s uh, and 30s by tomorrow morning. We're going to go 38. 58 on Tuesday, 67 Wednesday. Notice we're down to freezing Wednesday morning. Briefly, we could see a light freeze here in San Antonio. And then we go on our roller coaster ride. 72 Thursday, another front knocks us back down into the 50s. And then there's another front. Looks like maybe the end of the weekend into next week that could bring some really cold air with it. So busy seven day forecast. Yes, we'll have all the office prepared for these all of them. weeks. All of them. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Justin. Thank you, sir. 919, 65 degrees. A big milestone reach that is helping people here in San Antonio get the best possible outcome for a kidney transplant. When we come back, Tiffany Huetos tells us how the Living Donor Program at the University Health Transplant Institute has grown over the past year. Welcome back. The University Health Transplant Institute celebrated a major milestone. The team closed out 2023 by performing a total of 70 living kidney donor transplant, making it their highest volume year in the program history. Tiffany Huetos shares how this program has given a San Antonio woman a second chance at life. Kidney disease was uh, found out of maybe 2017. Um, it wasn't as bad as it after COVID, it, it got really bad. Janie Rodriguez was diagnosed with a cancerous tumor on her right kidney. And in December 2022, she underwent surgery to remove it. After they removed the kidney, um, I became active on the transplant list. But everything changed after a close friend volunteered to be screened to be her donor. She matched me at the beginning and then uh, she didn't match me because I had uh, high antibodies. Her friend was offered to be part of an organ exchange program at the hospital and agreed. They found a 
altruistic donor for me. And so uh, they found uh, a recipient for her kidney. In October 11th, 2023, Rodriguez received a new kidney thanks to the team of transplant surgeons and healthcare professionals at the University Health Transplant Institute in San Antonio. She says her life changed drastically. Always being tired, always being fatigued. I always needed to have a nap. Now I don't. Uh, my energy level is, is much higher now. This is just one of the many programs here saving lives. We consider gender, we consider the um, antibody antigen, like how well they will pair and not reject. Um, we look at age, we look at all those things. So then we have a pool of donors, we have a pool of, of recipients with those donors, and we start to mix and match and we just figure out the, the best pairing. Dr. Elizabeth Thomas is a surgeon and director of the Living Donor Program at the University Health Transplant Institute. She is proud of this team for performing 70 living kidney donor transplants last year. Living kidney donor transplants are the best quality kidney transplant a recipient can get. Um, and so to have that growth in our program um, just means that more people got a better kidney and will have better outcomes. More than 103,000 men, women, and children are on the national transplant waiting list. According to the U.S. government's organ donation statistics, 17 people each day die waiting for an organ transplant. In our community, we know there is a higher um, number of, of people with diabetes and hypertension, um, and that means there's more people with kidney disease and that means there's more people in need of a kidney transplant. Janie is grateful for this program and the team. Today, she focuses on making healthy choices. Eating better, um, you know, incorporating more veggies, uh, less meat, um, taking walks with my granddaughter. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And if you are ready to sign up to be a living organ donor or to learn more about it, you can just visit our website at KSAT.com. Time right now, 926, 65 degrees. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. And when we come back, we're going to be doing a live Q&A about Consumer Reports' latest test for plastic chemicals in our food. That's right. Plus, David and RJ will be back with morning sports to go over the Cowboys and Texans' big wins. Plus, a look ahead to the wild card games this coming weekend. Welcome back. Consumer Reports tested 85 foods for the presence of plasticizers or chemicals used to make plastic. These chemicals have been linked to health concerns, even at very low levels, yet some products had much lower levels than others. The head of product safety testing at Consumer Reports, James, Roger, James Rogers, joining us this morning to break down all the testing and share tips for avoiding dangerous products. Good morning, James. Good morning. Glad to be here. Thanks for joining us. Well, first of all, what was the goal of the investigation? So Consumer Reports has a history of testing for these chemicals. Our last time we tested it was in 2009. So for this testing, we just wanted to see at the present time how extensive were these chemicals in America's food supply. James, what food products did Consumer Reports test and what chemicals did you test for? So of the 85 that you mentioned, it included yogurt, fast foods, drink sodas, meat, poultry, canned fruits and vegetables. And we were trying to detect the plasticizers, bisphenols, including bisphenol A, and phthalates or phthalate replacement chemicals. And what health concerns have plasticizers been linked to? Okay, these chemicals are a group considered to be endocrine disruptors. And what that means is that they can influence the presence and the levels of hormones in the human body, including estrogen. And because of this ability to regulate hormones, they can lead to problems with obesity, certain cancers, cardiovascular problems, reproductive problems, including infertility and other uh, uh, physical problems with the body. Okay, so what should people do to reduce their exposure to chemicals in plastic? Okay, in the article, which you could find on CR.org, we talk about limiting or eliminating fast food, eliminating all plastics in your own kitchen as you prepare food, replace them with metal or wood or silicone. Uh, do not use plastic water bottles, use uh, stainless steel or glass. Um, you avoid fatty foods because these are more associated with these chemicals and just try to eat a healthy, balanced diet of minimally processed foods to minimize the 
contact with these chemicals. You're not going to be able to eliminate them, but at least you can reduce your exposure. Yeah, a lot of little steps to follow there, though. Well, thank you, James Rogers from Consumer Reports. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you. Have a good week. All right, back outside with uh, live cam here in San Antonio. 65 degrees, very mild, kind of muggy out there, but uh, we know things are going to change quite a bit in the next day or so. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of different kinds of weather kind of uh, just within 24 hours. It is smuggy. It's wet out there. We're going to see the rain move out and some very dry air move in this afternoon along with some very gusty winds. Now, uh, when I report these next numbers, don't throw anything at the TV. Uh, I know you want to. We all do. Mountain Cedar. Very <laughs> <laughs> Mark just nearly destroyed a camera. It's okay. Uh, Mountain Cedar is very high at 16,200. Surprisingly, it came up today. And here's the even uh, worse news, I think. Uh, Cedar could go even higher tomorrow with these gusty winds. So just a heads up. Not only that, molds are moderate at 730. That doesn't help anything. Uh, weather headlines. So we've talked about the gusty winds. Well, that means there's a fire danger today, especially west of San Antonio. And uh, then we uh, transition into wind chill issues. That'll be tomorrow morning. We'll get uh, wind chills in the 20s and 30s, gusty winds, colder air. Uh, just another part of this storm system. And could we see even colder weather down the line? It's a possibility. We're going to discuss that coming up here uh, in just a couple minutes. One quick check of the radar. Still got some showers out there. The bigger storms are off to our north and east, but we're starting to see some showers develop right along the front, just out to the north and west of Kerrville. Uh, we'll take another look at the forecast, these winds, and what you can expect next several days coming up. Sorry, Mark. It's okay, Football buddy. coverage brought to you by <laughs> Davis Law Firm. I know it's not your fault. It's At least that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> it's not Justin's fault. It's not. Well, the NFL playoffs are set, and there are a ton of storylines to start the postseason. This is going to be awesome. Cowboys and Texans both hosting playoff games. David and RJ back to break it all down. Fun weekend mm. of football, guys. Yeah, absolutely. David, how about them Texans? Yes. No. Oh, no. nice. I no, like I know. That. I get it. This is Cowboys country, so Cowboys. Hey, yeah. Texas, I, we talked about this very beginning mm -hmm. of the yeah. season, watching C.J. Stroud. It Ooh. was a fun team to watch. Yeah. It was a fun game to watch. Saturday, they had nothing else to do Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. Watch the Texans. <laughs> So and then Jacksonville just totally messed it up yesterday oh, for yeah, themselves. That, and Texans that, end up winning the yeah. division. Think about this. A rookie head coach, a rookie quarterback. So the head coach is, you know, that's already a tough job when mm -hmm. you come in with a team that was like, what, one win last year? Yeah, two wins maybe. They ended two, up something like that. Second pick. And then yeah. they come in and you got to, you go. not only got a rookie head coach, but you got a rookie quarterback. And how often do rookie quarterbacks come through in the first year? Well, at least once, because this kid did. Yes, he and, and what a great okay, way to start. So we are going to start with the Texans here, like of course, that. Saturday night's game. 75-yard uh, touchdown pass on the first in. play. And then uh, Colts, you know what, of course, playing at home, had to make this a bit of a game here. Jonathan Taylor with a nice uh, touchdown run there. This came down to the fourth quarter, David, and you mentioned C.J. Stroud, his composure, getting the ball down the field is something pretty impressive by a rookie quarterback here. Very impressive, and the fact that, you know, they were able to, like, squeeze out a, a win at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, ah, ah. Fourth and one. Tough That one. poor guy that right there. Right after the game, he said, <laughs> that will not define me. I, it may not define you, but we're going to see it a lot. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> we're going to oh, we're see that play yeah. a lot. That was a fourth down. That was a first down catch right there. That was the well, season right there for wasn't the a first down catch actually because <laughs> yeah. he didn't yeah. catch it mm. so man pass was i think the uh the coach was even upset with the quarterback because he threw it behind him yeah i mean he could have he could have put yeah, it on the numbers and that would have been a first yeah, quarterback down could have made a better throw there yeah but you know people say well that would have been a first down they had won. well no because they still had to score mm -hmm. has still score a touchdown yeah. yeah so you know but look at that that Texans. what a great way Beautiful. to start the game that was a first play from scrimmage <laughs> yep all right, they, uh, so here we go. So, so Texans we'll talk, are in. Uh, Texas, we'll talk AFC playoffs here in a bit, but of course, oh, we're going to do it <coughs> right, go, now. right now. Okay. So here we go. The Texans do get the Saturday afternoon game. They're playing Cleveland, you know, a team that they lost to earlier this year, but without C.J. Stroud starting. That was that's one of the games he did he not missed, start yeah. for the Houston Texans this year. So, so why do they get the first game? Uh, you know, it's like, <laughs> man, you talk about lack of respect. I, throw I that think in you hit the head I'm going to watch there. just, yeah, you just did, to show it. get it there. Hey, it's a home game, though. They're playing yeah, at Energy go. Stadium. There we so, go. Yeah, who would have ever that. thought so, when the season started? Around, exactly, so. yeah. That's good. All right, uh, Cowboys, David. Speaking of go. home, mm -hmm. they did what they had to do yesterday to get that home field advantage, number two spot in the NFC. Mm -hmm. They may get 
They may get two home games. Well, they got to win the first one. Yep. But they may get two home yeah, games. I take care of business. Uh, Mark, what happened to that head coach of yours this morning? <laughs> As predicted, he Ooh, was fired. They yeah. are cleaning house in Washington. Yes. Yeah. So you see CeeDee Lamb stretching that thing over the goal line? Never a good move to stick that ball out so, there like that. But but we were talking about CeeDee Lamb, <coughs> David, back in the newsroom and saying how just impactful he's been. I mean, he should be in the running here for MVP. Not going to get it. But still, CeeDee Lamb has been a difference maker for the Cowboys this year. 135 catches. Ouch. 1,749 wow. yards. Yeah. 12 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And he averaged 13 yards a catch, yeah. which a lot of times – it's below double digits for, for a lot of receivers because they usually get – but 13 yards a catch, that's a lot. That tells you that yeah. he caught it and ran with it and that – what they call it, yak, yards after catch. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he got a lot of those. So that was uh, – that's yeah, he, he should be in the uh, – at least in the conversation. Yeah, for, I think he for, wins Offensive Player of the Year. Yeah. Probably not MVP, but still an incredible season for CD Lamb. Really unstoppable. How many picks did, uh, did Dak have last year? I forgot. He 15? Had 10, or, well, he had more than 10. I know he said – that he was last not going to throw more than 10 this year. But he had like 15 last year. He had about year, 15. He? he led the league last well, year. Well, he came yeah. close to 10, but he did it. Nine picks on the season. <laughs> wow, yeah. 36 touchdowns. But here, here, okay, Cowboy fans, we're going to bring you down a level. Here's the problem. He took advantage Ooh. of the bad teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... A lot of times he struggled against the good teams. He did. Uh, tell, I mean, against Buffalo, Miami, a couple. Of, so, guess yep. what? Dak gets to kind of redeem himself here as we get into the playoffs. Let's see the schedule because this is going to be fun. Mike McCarthy taking on his former team, the Green Bay Packers. Also, just the, the history, David, between these two teams. How many times are we going to see the Bart Starr touchdown in the, in the ice the bowl? ice bowl. <laughs> How many times are we going to see that if, over the next week? Or the Dez, right. the Dez no catch. The Dez that no catch. That was also a Green yeah. Bay Dallas was, game there, too. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So. Um, um, yeah, a lot of fun storylines. Oh, Jordan Love, a kind of an upstart quarterback, taking on veteran Dak Prescott. It's going to be a fun game here. In okay, so another thing that happened yesterday was the Cowboys kicker had one yeah. block, and then he yeah. doinked one off the upright. He was 35 of 35. He was perfect going into the game yesterday. Ooh. So maybe he got his misses out of the way. Right. <laughs> so, right. We'd like to think that. Because he right. did make one at the end of the game. He did. He so did. And they like, said, wow. Oh, that was brutal. That was good. I was okay. I so that. He's really good from 50-plus. Yeah. He's been great. He yeah. <laughs> been and really good. Cowboys undefeated at home. They are undefeated at home. So yes. you got three thirty Sunday game. afternoon against Let's Green see. Bay. That's going to be a so. lot of fun there. Yeah. Okay, David, uh, who else are we going to talk about here? Oh, the national championship game. Switching gears a little bit here. That is tonight. Yeah. Uh, Michigan taking on Washington. So we know uh, earlier Mike was very excited. So if Mike's <laughs> really Michigan. tired, worn out in the morning, I guess we'll know why because he stayed up all night watching the game. He's, he's taking he's the take day. Tomorrow. He's not coming in yeah. tomorrow morning. Yeah. Justin's coming in for him. Yeah. Oh. That. So if they lose, he doesn't have to put up with all the grief. Well, but if they win, he yeah. can't celebrate. I guess he'll just celebrate for the rest of yeah, the Yeah, he'll be happy if they win. Okay. Right. So he's uh, taking the day off tomorrow. Speaking of, that game is in Houston at Energy Stadium. That should yeah. be a lot of fun there. All right, David, we want to talk Spurs before we uh, let you go because okay. they did play kind okay. of this random Sunday game at noon. Hey, what was no this? one really knew that this game, two what what the game was noon. on <laughs> last night. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Spurs, noon game David. Um, tough loss here. Another tough one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Came within two. I mean, they were uh, close. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, here. Okay. So, so we. I did write. I did write this mm -hmm. down. I did. I look. I will. I, here's, the, here's what I'm going to say. Okay. Okay. It, it okay. was. It was with 9:52. It was 93-91. Cleveland Spurs yeah. were, were right there, and then with two minutes and 42 seconds left, it was 117 to 104. One, think about that. Well, 117 to 104 with 242 left, and they came all the way back in that short amount of time and got it all the way down to two and had a chance once again at the end of the game, you just saw it, to yeah. tie it up and send it to overtime. And Well, it coincided with this minutes restriction that we're seeing. Victor Wimbanyama is out of the game. They end up going down by double digits. They come back. They get it down to two, and then they have another another bad turnover late in the game. Jeremy Sohan threw the yeah. ball out of bounds. I don't know where he was throwing that. Who was he Kelvin throwing Johnson. that to? Uh, it looked like he Anybody? was trying to hit Keldon Johnson on that one. That did was. not get it done. I would have liked to see Victor Wimanyama go up with that shot, tie things up there. But uh, the other thing, David, 
Trey Jones, can we just uh-huh. name him the starter? I, I don't you know why you wouldn't. I mean, it's <laughs> obvious that he needs to be the starting point guard and that Jeremy Sohan experiment kind of blew up in their face. Yeah. That's one of those things where, you know, the beaker cracked and acid uh-huh. all over the table and it's like, oh, we got to clean up that Science mess. Sarah? And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Science Sarah. Yeah. Um, um, the, other, the other thing is, how many of these games, like that's two mm-hmm. tight ones in a row. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if Wimbanyama doesn't have this, this minute restriction, yeah. could they have won a few yeah. more games? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, he's been playing great. Hopefully yeah. they could get that restriction off in the next couple of weeks. What, they I, do play the Pistons, though, David. So yeah, that's good like, that's, there you go. There, there's <laughs> Pistons are worse than the Spurs. They're the only so team Spurs worse have than the Spurs, five but they're worse than the Spurs. How many does Detroit have? Three. Three? They have three. They're up to oh, three now. Okay. Spurs are five and 30. Three. Detroit is three and 33. So here we go. All right. Go Spurs. Okay. There's the bad news. The Spurs, like, I think it started Sunday. They're like seven of ten on the road. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's true. Although, you know, in years past, they used to be a pretty good road team. All right, yes. going for win number six. 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 Yeah. Yes. What is this? The race for six. The race for six. And it's been going on as long as this one's been going on as long as the other race for six. So. Yeah. Tired. <laughs> we'll get that. tired. We'll get that. <laughs> very tired Monica there. All right, guys, oh, thank man. you very much. Go Spurs, go. Yes. 942, <laughs> 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And we'll be right back with a look at weather. Race for six. <laughs> Let's look out there with Zoo Cam at 946 this morning. We have our friends, the flamingos, just hanging out out there before it gets cold. Will the flamingos be up right later today? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Spread their wings and uh, yeah, relocate? They're gone. Like, forget this place. Uh, We're worried about trampolines. I'm just asking about flamingos. <laughs> well, not for dear life. Right. Uh, yeah, and then tomorrow they could be all huddled up trying to stay warm. Aww. It's a rough go uh, yeah. with this kind of weather. It is. It is winter after all, but this is one of the more dynamic systems that we've seen come through yeah. Texas uh, so far this season, and it's going to produce a lot of different kinds of weather across the state of Texas. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the temperatures across the country, and yeah, it's cold up there in International Falls, where you would typically expect cold weather, zero. But some of this cold air is spilling down the Rockies. It's 17 right now in Denver, 28 in Albuquerque. And that cold air is starting to work into the Texas Panhandle where it will fall below freezing today if it's not already there or not has has hasn't already happened. Uh, As we look a little closer here at Texas, 36 in Amarillo. Again, they'll be falling down close to freezing with some snow likely by this afternoon. For us, now we're not getting a report out of San Antonio right now, but uh, we're in the 60s out ahead of this front. You can see the difference here. It's 57 Waco, 15 Abilene. That front's right about there. And uh, we'll continue to produce some showers and storms as it progresses off to the south and east today. And then probably some severe weather off to the east of San Antonio. Here's a look at the watches and warnings. And as I said earlier, there's a lot of them. We've got blizzard warnings up across the Texas Panhandle. High wind warnings out west. Red flag warnings for those west of San Antonio. And wind advisories for the entire state. It's not going to be windy here. It's windy everywhere. And... A little closer look at that red flag warning west of San Antonio. This is where we can see a pretty high fire danger today. You get those really strong winds. We've had a freeze. It's been dry uh, in some cases, and so that could lead to some pr- uh, pretty quickly spreading fires uh, that we would need to watch if that were to happen. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, and uh, here's a look at the radar. We're not getting rain out west. That's another problem, too. But you see the rain here around San Antonio and along I-10. Showers and now starting to see a few storms up near Bastrop and as you get over towards Bryan College Station, some bigger storms. We just don't quite have the dynamics here to get a lot of severe weather going. But we are getting some of that light rain, some of the drizzle, and it continues around the airport along 410. And even if you're not seeing rain on the radar right now, there's still drizzle out there. Uh, and it's making for wet roads, as RJ has been telling us most of the morning. Uh, as we look back out to the west, here is the front, and we are starting to see some thunderstorm development along the front. So that'll be something to watch uh, as it works towards Kerrville and eventually San Antonio. This line will be through here, I think, around midday. And then behind that, you get clearing and you get the gusty winds. So let's look at that forecast. Uh, this particular model doesn't show a whole lot of rain with the front, but we'll see if we can get a line to develop. We certainly could see a little bit. And then that front pushes south and east. We clear out by, say, 2 o'clock. And then uh, those gusty winds really start to kick in by about dinner time. Let's look at the potential wind gusts. Uh, 10 o'clock, 46 miles per hour. This is just one computer model, but I think we'll be in the range of 40 to 50 miles per hour, uh, where some places could see those 50 mile per hour wind gusts. 
I think we may peak around midnight and then by tomorrow morning, still some very gusty winds, but maybe not quite as strong. This is around seven o'clock gusting to 40. And then as we head into tomorrow afternoon, the winds will finally subside from out of the uh, su subside some uh, and we'll see northwesterly winds still, but it'll start to come down. The wind chill tomorrow morning, you see those very strong winds and some cold temperatures. It'll feel like it's in the low 30s here in San Antonio, 20s in the hill country. So the wind chills, another thing to think about on your Tuesday morning. So rain gets out of here by noontime and then we kick in the winds. Temperatures fall off a little bit behind the front too. In fact, we dip down into the 50s by this evening and then eventually I think 30s by tomorrow morning and very quickly down the line, way down the line. We are watching for some potentially much colder air. That would be the week of January 15th. Uh, there could be a brief hard freeze. This is something uh, we keep our eyes on, but it's a little far out to get into specifics. So 58 tomorrow, 67 Wednesday. We will be down close to freezing Wednesday morning, 72 Thursday. Another front cools us down as we head into the weekend. And it's that second front on Sunday that can bring the really cold stuff. We'll be right back. Oppenheimer! The film Oppenheimer won five Golden Globe Awards, including Best Motion Picture Drama. Two of its actors also took home trophies. Killian Murphy for Best Male Actor in a Motion Picture Drama and Robert Downey Jr. for his supporting role. The film's director, Christopher Nolan, also earned his first Golden Globe. He always maintained his loyalty to his country, what he needed to do, never apologized for what he did. And yet all of his actions are the actions of somebody wracked by tremendous guilt. And, and that, that tension really is what drew me to it. Lily Gladstone won Best Female Actor in a Motion Picture Drama for the Martin Scorsese directed Killers of the Flower Moon. Every time I've felt a level of guilt or feeling like it wasn't really possible, my mom and my dad my whole life, they've never once questioned that this is what I was meant to do, that um, they would always support me even when it was the times of famine over the times of feast. In the musical or comedy categories, Poor Things won the Motion Picture Prize. Its star, Emma Stone, took home the award for female actor. She was a character unlike anything I've ever played or read or seen before. And Paul Giamatti won male actor for his work in The Holdovers. It marks his third Golden Globe victory. Barbie won the Globe's newest award, the inaugural trophy for cinematic and box office achievement. On the small screen, HBO's now wrapped Succession won best TV series drama. For comedy, effects as The Bear won the top prize. Next up on the awards front, the Governor's Awards given out by the Motion Picture Academy. And then on January 15th, the Emmys, which had been postponed due to the SAG after strike. In Beverly Hills, George Pinocchio for ABC News. And strangely, nothing for uh, Yellowstone either. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah. popular one with a lot of mm -hmm. people. That was like an oversight. A bit. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned The Crown. Yeah, I was surprised the Crown didn't get any But there was a gap between these last couple seasons of The Crown, too. It's true. Yeah. It was a long, long wait. Good stuff, though. Yeah. And yeah. maybe we'll see the nominations later. Yeah. True. That's true. Well, thank you, guys. Have a good day today. Be safe.